on behalf of Zach and Becky, I want to thank you all for coming today. I was going to ask you all to sit down, but I see that uh, you've all uh, taken care of that already. Becky, I almost did not recognize you. You look absolutely spectacular. Doesn't she? Yeah. Uh, girls, you also. Beautiful. Fellas, you look like a million bucks. Uh, wonderful. Marriage uh, was God's idea. God never intended for us to do life alone. The Bible says that it's not good for man to be alone. God says in the Bible two are better than one because they keep each other warm on a cold winter's night. Who could be Ecclesiastes says that. And the Bible also says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. So we're going to pray now. I'm going to ask you to stand one more time. And Daryl Lynn, a good friend of Bozak, and Becky is going to come now and pray and ask his blessing on the ceremony. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this day and the gift of marriage. Thank you that family and friends can come together to celebrate, support, and love Zach and Becky in their union. We ask God that you not only bless this special day, but also their marriage, keeping you at the center of their lives. We pray that this day would make wonderful memories and would be the beginning of a marriage full of faith, love, and joy as they journey through life together. May you, Lord, be honored and glorified today in their commitment to one another. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Aria, Zachary's sister, is going to come now and read the scripture. Ephesians 5, 25-33. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is profound, but I am saying that it refers to Christ and the Church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Thank you, Aria. Well, the day has finally come. Zach and Becky, judging by the size of the audience here, obviously a lot of people love the two of you. Uh, now, don't be nervous. Um, You've both done a fantastic job so far, and uh, so don't be nervous. I know we're not supposed to envy, but I envy Zachary's hair. <laughs> Boy, don't you envy Zachary's hair? Thank you, you have something to look forward to. Uh, I, I don't know how many of you know this, but um, Zachary proposed to Becky in a movie theater. I, I mean, he rented out a movie theater just for the two of them. And he made a video game. And Becky played the video game right there on the, the big screen. Now, I'm not much of a gamer. The last video game I played, I think, was Donkey Kong. <laughs> so I was impressed when I heard that Zachary made a video game for Becky. And he did all of this on New Year's Eve. How cool is that? That's right up there with a the guy who rented out a baseball stadium to propose to his girlfriend because she said she always wanted a big diamond. Um, so last New Year's, they're both at Zachary's dad's house, and it's early evening, and Zachary's got a plan. And so he says to Becky, I need you to help me to get something out of the car. 
supply, you see. So Becky innocently goes along, suspecting nothing. They get into the car, and they drive clean across the city to Scarberia. <laughs> Apologies to any of you from Scarborough. We lived there at one time. Uh, but Becky's got no clue where they're going. And she mentioned to me that she's thinking, so this is what getting kidnapped is like. <laughs> and they, they pull into this movie theater parking lot, and they go inside, and they're the only two in the whole theater, except for the guy operating the projector and the other guy standing with his hand out to collect the $10,000 rental fee. <laughs> Concession stand isn't even open. So they go into the auditorium, and there's an image up there on the IMAX. Cartoon figures of Zachary and Becky. And I, I forget what Zachary called it, our love story or Zach and Becky's Excellent Adventure or something. <laughs> so, so they're sitting in this dark, quiet movie theater, and Becky's thinking, I wonder has anybody at the Thompson house missed us yet? <laughs> Zach gives her that video game thingy uh, controller, and he says, I want to play a game. So Becky starts to play, and there's seven levels, and I, I assume now if she gets stuck, Zachary, of course, will help her out, and if Zachary was planning to just let her figure it out on her own, well, I suppose Becky would just poke him on. Uh, so she gets all the way up. You didn't get that one, did you? So, so she gets all the way up, gets all the way up to level seven, and right there up on the Jumbotron, she watches Zach, the cartoon character, get down on one knee and ask Becky, the cartoon character, will you marry me? And that's where the video game ends. Right there, the curtain closes. I mean, if we were all watching that, we'd be saying, wait a minute, don't leave us hanging. What does she say? What? What? Cliffhanger. <laughs> so I asked Becky, well, what happened next? <laughs> Becky says, she looked over at Zach, and in the dark, Zach gets down on one knee, right there, and he's got a ring in his hand. I mean, if that had been me, I'd probably have dropped the ring. <laughs> so Becky starts to cry. And the orchestra starts to play. Just kidding about that orchestra part. <laughs> Becky tells me she doesn't remember what happened next, but she says, apparently I said yes. Because <laughs> here we are. Isn't that a great story? Zachary, you know, you can probably make some money at that game doing video games. <laughs> the moral of the story, of course, is this. Becky. When Zachary tells you that he needs your help getting something out of the car, make sure you take your coat and make sure you take some extra cash and maybe pack an extra set of clothes and tell the people in the house that if you're not back in three hours, don't phone the police. <laughs> Zachary, that was fantastic work. Well done. I have one observation to make about that little story. There was actually three of you there that night. There's a couple of verses in the Bible that says two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. God never intended for us to do life alone. Two are better than one. But then two verses later you get this. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Two's better than one, but three is better than two. Jesus said, were two of you come together in my name, even in an empty movie theater on New Year's Eve, I am there 
with you. I'm in your corner. I'm going to help you. I'm for you. Building a lifelong marriage is hard work. You're going to need all the help you can get. Last week, in the middle of the night, Belinda woke me up out of a sound sleep, yelling. It's snowing, it's snowing. It scared the life out of me. And I'm thinking, you woke me up to tell me it's snowing? Then I realized she was saying, you're snoring, you're snoring. <laughs> Becky, you're going to face some challenges. <laughs> Zachary might snore. On the other hand, Zachary, Becky might, well, never mind, you'll figure that out on your own. <laughs> but the point is, in keeping with the spirit of the season, there's going to be days, Zach, when you're on the naughty list. This isn't going to be easy. There's going to be days when you're in the dark and you're not sure what's happening. Just like it was, Becky, for you that night, you didn't know what was going on. 1 Corinthians 13 says exactly that. For now we see through a glass darkly. But if you will both trust the presence of Christ, the light of the world, He's for you. He's in your corner. He loves you. He can calm storms. And He can handle anything that comes your way. And He'll help you. And He'll get you through. People fight in one of two ways. They either fight to get their own wants and their own demands, which ultimately destroys relationships. Or, they fight for the relationship. When you two fight, he will help you to fight for the marriage, not for your own wants. And I promise you it will be worth it all. Building a strong, healthy, lifelong marriage is going to be your proudest achievement and your single greatest life accomplishment, bar none. And when it's all over, you're going to cross the finish line with the flame of your love still burning bright, and as somebody else put it, you will slip the surly bonds of earth and you will look into the face of Jesus and you'll hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Both of you know that heaven is real. And you both plan to go there. I don't mean anytime soon, but <laughs> you're both planning to go there. And both of you know in the words of that old hymn, what a day that will be when my Jesus we shall see and look upon his face and see the wonder of his grace. Both of you know that. And both of you know that Jesus is the only way to get there. Both of you one day read the Bible where Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody can come to the Father except through me. And both of you did what millions of other people have done before you. You asked yourself, what if the Bible's true? What if Jesus Christ really is God? What if he really did visit this planet? What if Jesus is telling the truth? You're a very smart young couple. And you both know the importance of making wise investment decisions. The importance of not risking what you're not prepared to lose. And both of you knew that it was smart to not risk losing eternity and to not roll the dice on stakes that were eternal in significance. And so you both trusted Christ. You know that the greatest most confident, joyful way to live 
is to be ready to die. And you both love and care for all these dear people who are here today so much that you ask me to tell all of them that they can know for sure that they can go to heaven too if they will trust Jesus Christ. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says, and you will be saved and have eternal life. Amen? Wesley and Selina, come and lead us in a great hymn of the faith. The words are inside of your program. And uh, why don't you all stand as Wesley and Selina lead us in singing this.
Who gives Rebecca to be married to Zachary? All right, thank you, Roy and Regina. Zachary and Rebecca, vows in the Bible were between God and his people. And it's fitting that Jesus spoke of the church as being the bride of Christ. God treats vows with the most profound seriousness. We're standing here today on holy ground. If you were true to the spirit of these vows you're both about to make, Regard them with the degree of holiness they deserve. I promise you both, they'll be a blessing to you all your life. What do you both offer as a token of your commitment to one another? These rings. Okay. The rings carry symbolic weight. They are made of gold, symbol of the purity of your love for one another. They are also endless circles, never to be broken unless by an outside force, signifying the unending dimension of your love for one another, until broken by the outside force of death. Zachary Devin Thompson, will you have Regina Rebecca Victoria Austell to be your wife and to live together after God's ordinance? Will you love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health forsaking all others keep only to her so long as you both shall live Rebecca uh, Re Regina Rebecca Victoria Austell will you have Zachary Devin Thompson to be your husband to live together after God's ordinance will you love him comfort him honor and keep him in sickness and in health, forsaking all others, keep only to him, so long as you both shall live. I will. And do you both promise that you will never seek to end this marriage in a court of law by divorce? We do. Zachary, place the ring on the third finger of Rebecca's left hand and repeat after me. I, Zachary Devon Thompson. I, Zachary Devon Thompson. Take you, Regina Rebecca Victoria Austell. Take you, Regina Rebecca Victoria Austell. As my dearly beloved wife. As my dearly beloved wife. I commit myself to you. I commit myself to you. As your faithful husband. As your faithful husband. To honor you as a person. To honor you as a person. To love you as my companion. And to, cherish you and to cherish you as a child of God. I intend the love I have for you now to be just the beginning of the love I will come to have as the years go by. As the years go by. I, look I look forward to sharing my life, sharing my life with, you. with you, whatever the future holds. Whatever the future holds. And I will comfort you Confide in, you, confide in you and journey with you, and journey with you. Whatever, the conditions around us, whatever the conditions around us I desire, I desire to, always protect you, to always protect you to never harm you, to never harm you in word or deed in word. I declare myself open, I declare myself open for, growth and change, for growth and change in any manner, in any manner that will profit the two of us on our, journey together, on our journey together, under the direction and authority, the direction and authority of, the Lord Jesus Christ. of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well done. <laughs> Rebecca, place the ring on the third finger of Zachary's left hand and repeat after me. I, Regina, Rebecca, Victoria, Oscar. I, Regina, Rebecca, Victoria, Take you, Zachary Devin Thompson. Take you, Zachary Devin Thompson. As my dearly beloved husband. As my dearly beloved husband. 
I commit myself to you. I commit myself to you. As your faithful wife. As your faithful wife. To honor you as a person. To honor you as a person. To love you as my companion. To love you as my companion. And to cherish you. And to cherish you. As a child of God. As a child of God. I intend the love. I intend the love. I have for you now. I to be just the beginning of the love, to be just the beginning of the love. I, will come to have, I will come to have as the years go by. As the years go by. I look forward, I look, I look forward to, sharing my life to sharing my life with you, with you whatever, the future holds, whatever the future holds. And I will comfort you, and I will comfort you confide in you, confide in you and, journey with you, and journey with you whatever the conditions around us, whatever the conditions around us. I desire <laughs> I lost my place. Sorry. <laughs> to always protect you. To always protect you. To never harm you. To never harm you. In word or deed. In word or deed. I declare myself open. I declare myself open. For growth and change. In any, manner, in any manner that will profit the two of us, two of us on, our together, on our journey together under the direction and authority, the direction and authority of, the Christ, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> Zachary and Rebecca are now going to exchange some personal vows they have written themselves. Becky. I promise to actively pursue our relationship, doing my best to help it grow by pouring my love and effort into it always. I will strive to be continually learning how to love you better in order to strengthen both our friendship and our marriage. I will endeavor to be a good spiritual leader both for you and for our future family, always seeking God's will for us and working to be more and more like Christ. My desire is to always build you up, doing everything in my power to help you achieve your dreams, even if it means putting mine on hold. Indeed, my goal is to make it my pleasure to make sacrifices for your sake, always putting your needs before my own, and providing you with everything I can to help you reach the full potential that God has created in you. Well done.
Matt, uh, Becky's brother, is now going to come and explain the veil and cord ceremony. Becky and Zach will now go through a Filipino way tradition, the veil and the cord ceremony. The couple's veil is a symbol of the presence of God in the same way that the cloud was a symbol of his presence in the Old Testament. It is placed over the shoulders of the couple to symbolize their union and being clothed as one in unity. As the fathers place the veil, we pray that God would protect and strengthen Becky and Zai as they carry life's burdens together. The cord is a symbol of the couple's bond, that indeed they are no longer two, but one, in their new life as husband and wife. As the fathers place the cord, we pray that God would increase the bond of love and friendship that unites Becky and Zai for the rest of their lives and that their compassion and their truth and service will increase both to each other and to the community. Now the two dads are going to pray a prayer of blessing on uh, Zachary and Rebecca. Why don't you stand in uh, symbolic support as, as they pray for them. Rebecca? May the Lord bless you so that you grow in godliness and your life will impact many others for Christ. May the Lord bless you to be a virtuous woman whose price is far above rubies. May the Lord bless you with strength and honor. May the Lord bless you with children that rise up and call you blessed and with a husband who praises you. May you experience richness and fullness of joy as you begin your life with Zion. The woman that feared the Lord, she shall be praised. Zachary, I commit you into the hands of God. You are now the head of a new family, as Christ is the head of the church. May God bless you with the desire to put the Lord Jesus Christ first in your life, and with a wife who will do likewise. May God bless you with success as a husband, success as a father, and success as a man. May God bless you in your marriage and in your finances. May the Lord bless you with wisdom, and understanding and awareness of his presence, knowing that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of this life. Zach and Rebecca, as a new family, as one flesh, as husband and wife, may the Lord bless you both by making more successful married than you were single. May the Lord bless you to help each other reach your full potential in life. May the Lord bless you with intimacy in marriage, and may you give each other pleasure as God intended. May the Lord bless you with purity in marriage. May the Lord bless you with health and strength, and may you be blessed with children God wants you to have. May God bless you, Zachary, with genuine love for Rebecca, and may God bless you, Rebecca, with a respect for Zachary, for this is God's will and the secret to keeping your marriage young and alive. Above all, may the Lord bless you with humility and deep respect for him, for humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor in life. Zachary and Rebecca, remember to love God and put him first always in everything. Now, as you go through your individual lives, to become one. <laughs> May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord may make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his confidence upon you and give you peace. Thank you, gentlemen. You may be seated. Cindy is going to play on the piano while we go to the registry table to sign some documents.
have uh, watched these two grow up and become the mature young man and young woman standing before you today. And it has been a delight and an honor to have been involved today, and I want to thank you both for asking me to participate. And now I'm going to ask you to stand, and it is my pleasure to present to you Mr. and Mrs. Zachary and Rebecca Thompson.